Do I need a firewall for my home network? Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for askleo.com. So the TLDR, or I guess it'd be the TR, TLDW, too long, didn't watch, is that yes, you need a firewall and no, you probably don't need to do anything because yes, you probably already have one. Let me explain all that because it's actually fairly confusing depending on exactly who you're talking to and what their own opinions are. First off, what is a firewall? The, the word comes from the sheet of metal or the wall between the passenger compartment and the engine of an automobile. It's true for other vehicles as well, but cars are something I think we're pretty much all familiar with. The idea is that the wall protects you should your engine catch on fire. Obviously, it doesn't protect you forever, but it protects you from a large number of different kinds of engine fires so that you have an opportunity to do something or not worry about it or get out of the car. A firewall in software terms is exactly the same thing in the sense that it's protecting you from what's on the other side of that wall. The difference is that unlike a car, What's on the other side of the wall is always on fire. You're always being constantly bombarded by network based threats trying to reach your computer and your equipment that the firewall between you, your computers and the Internet protects you from an important way to look at this. An important distinction to make is to understand what it is you want to have reach your computer and what it is you don't want to have reach your computer. So, for example, you want the web pages you visit to be able to get to your computer so that you can see them. You want the software you download to be able to be downloaded to come from the Internet and reach your computer. And you want the music you listen to or the videos you stream like this one to be able to come down from the Internet, wherever they happen to be, reach your computer or your other equipment so that you can watch them, so that you could consume them, so that you can use them, so that you can do whatever it is you want to do with that content. Now, the kinds of things you don't want are, for example, the malware that's on your neighbor's machine trying to reach out and infect you. You don't want that. You don't want overseas hackers who are trying to gain access to your machine or your Internet of Things devices or your whatevers. You don't want them to be able to get into your system, to get into your network and to get into your devices. There are a number of scenarios like this where there are malicious entities, be they individuals or even just automation that's more or less constantly trying to break into every computer that happens to be connected to the Internet. Now, there's an important distinction between the two things that we want and we don't want. If you look at the list that I just talked about, the difference is very simple. The things you want are things that you asked for. You went and you requested a web page. You went and you requested to watch a video stream. The things you don't want were unsolicited. You didn't ask for them. Nobody went out and asked your neighbor's computer to try and get into yours. Nobody went out and asked the overseas hackers to go out and try and get into your systems. And that's what a firewall does. It knows the difference between what you've asked for, which it lets through, and the things you didn't ask for, which it blocks. Now, there are two types of firewalls hardware and software. A hardware firewall, honestly, your router is a great hardware firewall. By the very nature of the way that it shares your single internet connection amongst all of the machines and devices you have connected, that technique called network address translation actually automatically protects you from exactly the kinds of things that I was talking about. The only thing that network address translation, the only thing that a router can allow through are the things that you've requested. Everything else is automatically blocked. 
That's a great firewall. And that's why I say you've already got one because you're probably behind a router. We all have so many different devices these days. It's the only way we can share a single internet connection. In the off chance that you have exactly one internet connected device, you know what? Put it behind a router anyway. That's how important it is. That's how easy it is to get yourself behind a hardware firewall, even with a single device. Just use a router, even though you're not sharing your internet connection with other devices at home. Now, software firewalls are programs running on your computer, and you've probably already got one of those too. All of the recent versions of Windows include a software firewall that is enabled by default. It does many of the same kinds of things as our hardware firewall does. The difference, of course, is that with a hardware firewall like your router, those threats that it has blocked never ever even reach your computer. Whereas a software firewall, it can only block those things that have reached your computer. And therefore, yeah, there's a little bit of extra risk, but it's not really that great. A software firewall is very benign these days. They don't impact performance like they used to, and they're actually a good second level of protection. What is important for a software firewall is if you've got other machines behind your router, in other words, that are on the quote unquote safe side of your router that you may not be able to completely trust. For example, let's say you have your computer connected to a router connected to the Internet. You are protected from threats coming in from the Internet. Let's say you also have kids and those kids are also connected to that same router. They are protected from the threats coming in from the Internet. Anything that they didn't request isn't going to make it across. However, you're not necessarily protected from your kids. If for whatever reason they end up, say, requesting, they do a download and that download happens to have malware, that malware could potentially try and attack your machine. It's behind the firewall. Your router is not there to protect you. So that's where the software firewall on your machine comes into play. It protects you from the other threats, the other things that may happen to have made their way onto your local network and may be causing you some issues there. As I said, the software firewalls that are included in current versions of Windows are very effective and they really don't impact things that much. And the good news is they're probably already on by default. So once again, like using a router, there's probably not a thing you need to do. One of the pushbacks I get sometimes when I talk about firewalls is the concept of an outbound firewall. I have a completely separate article on that, but the bottom line is that an outbound firewall protects you or notifies you if something on your machine that appears to be malicious is reaching out to the Internet. In other words, it's not protecting you from what's coming in on the Internet. It's kind of sort of protecting the Internet what might be leaving your machine. I generally don't find an outbound firewall worth the effort. And I say that because they're only protecting you in a situation where you've already got malware on your machine. Something bad has already happened. Hopefully they'll notify you, but honestly, your anti-malware tools should be doing that. So I really don't consider an outbound firewall, a software firewall typically, necessary or particularly useful. Now, I do have to say that software firewalls, hardware firewalls, firewalls of any sort can only do so much. Most importantly, they cannot protect you from yourself. Remember, I said that a hardware firewall and the software firewalls that I've been talking about will protect you from unsolicited connection attempts from outside of your network. So somebody random out on the Internet can't initiate a connection to your machine. However, it will not prevent you from downloading malware. In other words, it's not going to prevent you from receiving a piece of email, which is something that your email program requests. And it's then not going to prevent you from opening up the attachment that has malware in it. Hopefully you have additional software, your security suite, perhaps protecting you from those scenarios, or perhaps even more importantly, you have yourself skeptical enough 
to protect yourself from those scenarios. But do understand that a software or hardware firewall cannot protect you from everything. It's an important part, but it's only a part of your overall security regimen. Regardless, protection from those network-based threats remains incredibly important. And one way or another, if for some reason you don't have a firewall, you want to get one. Hopefully that was helpful. For links related to the article on which this video was based, for updates, for comments, and so forth, visit askleo.com slash 1911. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.